On behalf of our school community, I extend a very warm welcome to all of you as we begin this unique occasion to celebrate the achievements of the Year 14 class of 2020. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to recognise your achievements amid very challenging times. Your excellent results reflect your diligent work, the work of dedicated teachers, which when combined with the support of your parents and guardians, have produced outstanding grades. And remember, these were centre assessed grades, which had to be based on evidence of your previous and current achievement. They were not predicted grades or based on what you may have achieved on a good day with, as they would say in sporting terms, a fair wind and a rub of the green. These were grades calculated on your current and previous performance. Evidence based, these were grades achieved on merit. So be very proud of your achievements. And do not let anyone demean your grades or underestimate the challenges that you have faced over the spring term and the period up until your grades were finally accepted by SIA in August. I am very conscious that those were very stressful times and believe me, you are very much deserving of those outstanding results. Your educational experience this past year was truly unique. Your school was closed on the 13th of March and now you are in work or further education and most likely working from home or engaged in online learning. For those at university, this is not what you expected from university life. You have coped with unforeseen changes last year, managed in times of adversity. And while the continuation of the pandemic still causes horrendous grief and suffering for many, I do hope that you will emerge from this time of crisis strong, resilient and adaptable. Attributes that will be useful to you for the rest of your life. So you're very welcome back to your school for your virtual occasion. And I wish to thank you for your contribution to your school life over the past seven years and to recognise your excellent results. And there certainly were some outstanding achievements this year. And just to mention a few, over 79 students overall achieved two A grades or better in the A-level examinations. And of those 79, 51 of you achieved three A grades or better. And among those results were the outstanding achievements of two students achieving four A star grades, one student with an A star, two distinction stars and an A grade, and a nine further students achieved three A grades or three distinction star grades. These excellent achievements reflect the combined efforts of you as students, the work of your teachers and the impact of supportive parents. A real team effort. Our prize giving event also acknowledges the achievements in not just the academic field, but the extracurricular life of the school as well. And although a very much reduced provision because of the unique year of 2020, we still recognise the contribution of some students to the normal life of a school. And again, you are very, very welcome. And now I take this opportunity to introduce our guest speaker, Dominic McGrath. And it's my privilege and pleasure to do so. Dominic was a pupil at this school from September 2007 until June 2014. He was an outstanding student achieving A star grades in all the GCSE subjects and three A star grades in history, English literature and biology and an A grade in physics at A level. And personally I had the pleasure of teaching A level history to Dominic and he was an outstanding student in a class of very able historians. On leaving the Christian Brothers, he went to Trinity College Dublin to study law and politics. And while studying for his degree, he was also a freelance journalist for several Irish and UK publications, including the Irish Times and the Sunday Business Post. And following his graduation in June 2019, Dominic was employed by the Journal.ie, a very popular and highly rated news site. And I was reading one of his articles about COVID-19 online one night when I noticed who the author was and I emailed him. And Dominic emailed me back almost immediately. In the last few weeks, Dominic has taken up a new job as a broadcast journalist for BBC Radio Foil. So you will probably hear much more from Dominic from now on. So I welcome Dominic to our virtual prize given 
and now he will share some of his thoughts and experiences with us. Thank you, Dominic. So, this is all very strange. When I left OCBS several years ago, I never thought I'd be back speaking at a virtual prize giving in the middle of a pandemic. But I want to begin by thanking uh, Kira McBride for the invitation to speak to you all. Um, things are very difficult at the moment, as you know, and I don't want this speech, as it were, to turn into a homily or a sermon that tries to tell you that we're all in this together and that things will get better. I'm sure you've heard enough of those kind of platitudes um, in the last few weeks and months. Instead, I want to, I suppose, use my own experience to give you some kind of reassurance, but also I think tips for coping with the difficult uh, weeks and months ahead, and hopefully provide the right balance of hope and gloom um, as we face into this uncertain future. So there was a quote uh, doing the rounds from Seamus Heaney, you probably re remember it at the start of the pandemic. It was, if we winter this one out, we can summer anywhere. And it spoke really to the uncertainty of the time and the idea that there will be better things to come in the future. And it appealed to me and it appealed to thousands and thousands of others. But I think there's a different uh, Seamus Heaney quote that for me captures the strangeness of our times. And in one of his relatively early poems he talks about the tang of possibility. And it's a phrase that to me encapsulates the excitement and the wonder that exists in our world. The excitement that comes with being young and having the world at your feet. And it reminds me now of all the things we've lost, of how our field of vision has become narrowed because of the virus and the restrictions that have been introduced on what we can do. And to me, the quote is useful because it reminds me once of what we lost, but also it reminds me of the future that is still out there. Because for so long now, since March, we have lost that tang of possibility. It's been impossible on one level to plan for our future, to put our ambitions and our hopes and dreams into practice, but on another level, those simple pleasures, the idea that you can go off on a holiday, you can visit family and friends, you can go from one part of the country to another, or even cross the border, have become much more difficult and complicated, and in many ways, impossible. Our lives have become, has become uh, quite monotone, quite dull, and we're taking pleasure in very simple, mundane things, or at least I am. And that tang of possibility has become increasingly illusory. And that's something we're mourning um, in many ways together. Um, I've recently um, moved from Dublin back to Oma and now to Derry. I'm living in a one bedroom flat. I could never afford it if I was living in Dublin. And that's something that's giving me some pleasure, some enjoyment, it's a new adventure and a new opportunity. Um, but quite literally, um, the sort of the walls around us have shrunken. Um, you know, we're surrounded by fewer and fewer opportunities for adventure and excitement, especially now as we get to use these dark evenings. But I want to move on a little bit from the gloom, because I want to focus on the possibilities for the future. And while we have no idea when a vaccine or a cure or an effective treatment for COVID-19 will arrive, I'm not yet cynical enough to believe that something won't arrive. Um, if not next year, 
and the year after, or the year after that. And the good news for you guys is that you are still young. Um, the good news for me in many ways is that I am still young. We have still many years ahead to make the most of a COVID-free existence, or so I hope. And I think that's really important because we all know that COVID-19 and its impacts have hit young people particularly hard, whether that's um, putting people out of work, um, destroying um, those experiences in college and university, or simply stunting you know, the ambition to travel and see the world. And I must say, the idea of starting a new job straight out of school or going to college or university, to me, it must be so difficult. Um, what has was once so real um, has become an unreality. Um, your experience of college is one that no one has ever had to experience before. No one has ever had to leave school before in the middle of this pandemic. Um, so I find that I, I feel that must be very difficult and I completely sympathise uh, with you all. But I want to tell you that not that things will get better and not that the pandemic is an opportunity, it's not. But it is a moment to think about what you want to do to where your life is going. To pause, to think and to realise that at the age of what 18 or 19 you're still very young. Um, I don't think, when you're my age, 25, that COVID-19 will be still with us. And believe me, there are plenty of people who tell me that at 25, I'm still young. And sometimes it's hard to believe, um, given that over the course of my journalism career, I've covered Brexit, the last US election, a global pandemic, the, um, multiple um, elections and scandals and madness, really. So I feel a lot older than 25, but believe me, it is still young. Um, and you do have plenty of time to do everything that you want to do. And I think it's a moment really to follow your passions and interests, sort of find new ones. Um, I think the most inspiring thing I saw during uh, lockdown was that girl on TikTok who was raising tadpoles into frogs. Again, it's weird and it's strange, but it's it's finding a new source of possibility, a new source of entertainment um, in these strange times. So I want to, I suppose, leave you with the idea that while our world has shrunken and while we don't really know what's coming next, and while your daily experiences of work or college are impossible really to imagine, it must be so frustrating. Things will improve and there is still time for you to do everything you want to do. Um, I tell myself that every day. Sometimes I don't believe it, um, but I try and believe it. And that's, I suppose, the best thing we can do at the moment. So I suppose in a world, as I said, where we're living often in, in black and white, where the thrills and the excitement and the spontaneity have disappeared, try not to forget that tang of possibility. Try not to forget the taste of ambition and hope um, in these long, dark months ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dominic. And now we will have the presentation of award medals, achievement certificates, and awards for extracurricular and community involvement. And I've been asked Mr McBride to inform you that your achievement certificates will be posted out to you. And we ask those students who receive award medals, please contact the school to make the necessary arrangements to collect them. Thank you.
I will now conclude our prize given and leave you with a few thoughts to consider. First one to say is believe in yourself. This is the end of an era for you. This virtual prize given will be the last event for you collectively as a group of CBS students organised by the school. You've already moved on to university or work. Perhaps you're back home working online or you're online learning. But you've begun a new era in your personal career in either sense. If you're living away from home, you'll find that you have greater independence, but also the challenge of managing yourself. And for some, that can be a luxury or a burden. University life is very attractive, even with online learning. However, in normal circumstances, you need to be self-motivated and diligent. Attributes which you have displayed over the last seven years. And it is important that you continue to work hard and take the opportunities offered to you, whether at university or now in the world of work. Colin Powell, a retired four-star general who was American Secretary of State in the early 2000s, and in his book, It Worked For Me, wrote, Whenever you start, give it your best. The opportunities are there to be anything you want to be, but wanting to be someone is not enough. Dreaming about it is not enough. Thinking about it is not enough. You have to study for it, work for it, fight for it with all your heart and soul because nobody is going to hand it to you. I have no doubt you all have your dreams and your plans for your life ahead, the career you want to follow, places you want to see and things you want to do. And you've shown over the past seven years that you have the ability and the capacity to study, to work hard and to achieve good grades. You know, as Colin Powell said, nobody is going to hand it to you. And if you want something really badly and it's really important to you, and you have the capability of achieving it and are willing to devote your time and energy, I have no doubt you will get there. 2020 has been a very challenging year, but you've been able to manage the monumental changes in your life and to move on to the next stage. There is no doubt that you have the capacity of achieving your dreams. One thing this past year should have given all of you is the confidence to cope in an age of challenge and adversity. And I've taken a short quote from an American poet that was used by Nelson Mandela at his inauguration in 1994, which talks about fear of feeling inadequate or having a lack of confidence. And the first lines of the poem read, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate, our deepest fear that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light not our darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. So maybe sometimes we believe more in ourselves and what we are and also have faith in who we are. And perhaps you need to remember that in the months and years ahead. Many of you do not realise the talents you possess, the wisdom you already have at this early age, and your potential for the future. It is about believing in yourself and what you can achieve because you are the leaders of the future. It is you we will be depending on in the years to come. I have included the full text of that short poem at the end of the presentation. The second thing I would say to you is, never forget where you've come from. That means your family, your parents, your parish, town, locality, your life to date. Your experiences have made you what you are. Those family values of your parents and guardians, honesty and good habits, pride in your roots, that's what you are. You're going out into life to work or university most of you to further your education, develop your knowledge and to follow your dreams. Those values of your parents and your experiences in your home and in your school have shaped and moulded you into what you are. And believe in yourself. 
believe that you are of good character, well raised, fine young man. And that character, the character you possess, is extremely important. It is imperative. Whatever you do and whatever decisions that you make are guided by your personal moral compass that has been developed at home and in school. Your character is very important. And as John Wooden, the great American basketball coach, said, be more concerned with your character than with your reputation. Because your character is what you really are, while your reputation is merely what others think of you. And don't underestimate your influence. You are the future leaders of society in areas of science, business, finance, law, education, politics, whatever. See the world if that's what you want to do. This coronavirus pandemic will pass and the world will open up again. But remember, this part of the world also needs leaders, needs businessmen, needs enterprise and entrepreneurs, needs employers, needs good people in every walk of life. So don't forget where you've come from. And hopefully, as you become a leader, and some of you become our leaders locally, we will see more of you, not less of you. A few final words of thanks I want to make as well. Um, thanks to our sponsors. Um, we have provided a number of student bursaries, Liam Bradley Pharmacy, Corin Bigalier Photography, and Telestag Engineering. We very much appreciate your support to the school and to our students. And to all our local community groups we work with throughout the year in terms of street collections to allow our students to volunteer. And in particular to our main charities, the End of Dolan Foundation, St Vincent de Paul and the Edmund Rice Overseas Schools. Our students have really valued that experience and the enjoyment of working with you and your organisations. I also wish to acknowledge the work of several staff in the school who have brought this event all together and ensure that our virtual celebrations could happen. Thanks in particular to the following, to Mrs Martina McKay, who is responsible for collating the information for the prize given booklet, which will be sent out with the achievement certificates, and to Mrs Sharon Gormley for the cover design and printing. To Mr Fergal Quinn for the PowerPoint presentation, including the edit editing of the final video, and to Chris Eccles for all the photography. Also to Mrs. Zita McNulty for the provision of the achievement certificates and to the main office staff of Marie Donaghy, Sinead Mimna, Michaela Carlin and Kelly O'Donnell for all the administrative work related to our virtual prize giving event. And finally to Mr. Kieran McBride. Kieran is a senior teacher for us. He's also our community link and I want to thank him for all his work in bringing the different elements of this event together to create a bespoke prize giving for a very exceptional year and an excellent memory for you as our leavers of 2020. A few final thoughts. You as a year group have been wonderful ambassadors for the school over the past seven years and especially over the past two years. Your willingness to engage in extracurricular activities in sport and music, drama, public speaking, every occasion that you represented the school, you did so with distinction and respect. Your willingness to volunteer your time to help others, collecting for local charities, St Vincent de Paul Christmas collection, street collections, or assisting at school events like Open Day, the 10K Run, Parade Evenings. All your help is very, very much appreciated, and I have no doubt you will continue to represent the school well as past pupils wherever you go. For us, we will still be here if you need us. In time, we may move from the Kevlin Road to the Gorton Road, but we will still be here if you need our help. A few weeks ago, I received a letter from a former pupil who was looking for his junior and senior certificate examination results from 1958 and 1961. Those are the equivalent of Key Stage 3 and GCSE results. And I took great pleasure at helping out and providing those to him. And I was able to send him his first year class list from 1956 when he started the Christian Brothers. And also his examination class lists for 1958 and 1961. He left the school nearly 60 years ago. But I was glad to help out. 
because he was a brother's boy. And I wish to reassure you, one thing for certain, I'll be long gone in 60 years, but if there is anything you need, the CBS will still be here to help you on any occasion. Remember that you will always be a brother's boy. So if you ever need anything, you know where we are and we'll help out if we can. I wish you the very best in your years ahead. I would ask you to stay in touch and above all look after yourself. And don't be afraid to follow your dreams. That brings us to the end of our 2020 OMOS EBS virtual prize given. Thank you very much. <laughs>